Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor for those of you who have never been here before and in today's video we're going to be doing things just a little bit different. Usually on this channel I try to be a little bit more positive, talk about the good things about the game and things you can do in the game and all of that. I try to be like that in my everyday life too where I just want to look on the bright side and think about happy things and not really focus on things that I hate or things that I dislike about anything because that's just not who I am but Today I just feel like ranting a little bit about The Sims 4. I've seen on Twitter a lot of people talking about some of the negatives of the game and talking about how some people aren't very critical of the game, and I never want anyone to think that I am trying to appease EA in any way, especially I'm not a game changer as of recording this video. That's not something that you have to worry about right now. But I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm just kissing ass and trying to become a game changer or saying nice things for whatever reason. I'm just a very positive person and I'm always going to focus on the happy things before I ever focus on the negative things. And that's just kind of who I am. But I do want to kind of criticize the game a little bit more just so that you guys can make more informed decisions when thinking about what you should purchase. So for a little bit of context about me and The Sims, I've been playing since The Sims 1. I have like vivid memories of sitting on a couch with my mom and my older brother and we were sitting on my mom's work laptop playing The Sims 1 and we would each get to have a couple minutes to play and take turns and all of that and eventually I would get to create my own family. Now I would always make my mom, me and my brother and I would always lock my brother in a room so that he'd get sent away to military school. Anybody who played The Sims 4 probably did this whenever your siblings annoyed you. It was either that or find ways to kill them with fireworks. <laughs> it's just kind of what happened. But that's kind of how I played the game in The Sims 1. And then The Sims 2 came out in 2004. I was 10 years old. I was obsessed with it. Absolutely obsessed with The Sims 2. And honestly, I think The Sims 2 might be the best game in the franchise for me personally. So I there's a lot of things in The Sims 2 that I just wish were in The Sims 4. I have a lot of hours in The Sims. I have a lot of hours in The Sims 4. I've created an entire business between this YouTube channel and my website that makes me a pretty decent income through The Sims. And it's really incredible that this is my life. But I do have a lot of criticisms because I have played every Sims game. I have a lot of experience with this game and there's a lot of things that I just know are missing from The Sims 4. So we're gonna talk about some of the things that I absolutely hate from The Sims 4. So let's just jump in. So the first thing on this list is the entire emotion system in The Sims 4 is just something that I very much dislike. Now this was one of the bigger selling points for The Sims 4 and I honestly think that it fell a little bit flat. I find that the emotions never really impact my game in a positive way. They're only ever there to kind of impact my game in a negative way. So like Sims who are feeling sad or tense or embarrassed or angry, like those kind of things will impact the game. And sometimes I just want my Sims kids to come home from school without having experienced some kind of mood swing or very intense emotion at school and just come home and do their homework. But instead they're angry, they have to come home, take an angry poop, take a cold shower, and then eventually be able to be happy and do their homework. Like there's just so many little things about the emotion system that I don't like. I also find that the Sims team has kind of watered down emotions a lot and a lot of the time, unless you're feeling like very extreme emotions, like these Sims are all very very sad because their like, father of this family has passed away so they have a reason to be very sad but then you see things like inspired can you know be taken away by energized really quickly if they do one small thing or like do some push-ups or it'll you know switch to confident if they brush their teeth like there's so many things and it just switches so fast when human emotion is a lot more for most people at least human emotion is a much more like slow process and it's not like this at all times of the day so i just find that the emotion system doesn't really reflect most people's reality like i know that there is certain mental illnesses that are going to change the way that people perceive their emotions but that's not we're talking about the sims <laughs> i just find that the emotions are all over the place because you can go from fine to happy to sad to inspired to tense to whatever all in the same day and it just doesn't feel right it also drives me absolutely insane that a toddler can get really really upset by their like second cousin passing away just because they were a member of their family when they've never met them or like if you're doing the 100 baby challenge this is an issue a lot where like a sim will have never met their cousins or their siblings or you know their like uncles I guess it would be they've never met these people but they pass away and then the sims are devastated and it's so irritating it even seems like the sims team is getting away from emotions a little bit like they had at the beginning when the game launched this option where there was a ideal mood for every career and they were different so like for the culinary career I'm pretty sure it was inspired uh they'd be like confident for business or whatever and these felt like they mattered more when the sims 4 launched and they don't seem to matter as much anymore and that really bugs me 
It's just one of those little things that you don't really think about, but emotions are just a broken system in The Sims 4. So another thing that I really don't like about The Sims 4 is that The Sims really don't have that much personality. So in The Sims 4, you're able to give your Sims three traits, and these three traits are supposed to affect the way that they behave and some of the moodlets they get, which all ties back into that annoying emotion system that I just dislike. So for The Sim in particular, she's ambitious, she's family-oriented, and she's a goofball. Now, I didn't give her any negative traits because there wasn't any room for negative traits. Like things like she might be a glutton or a kleptomaniac or materialistic but even those traits don't do that much all they do is they give sims a little bit of a moodlet when they're you know if a sim hasn't stolen anything and they're a kleptomaniac they're gonna feel i believe tense and things like that so it's like but in the sims 3 you had things like never nude <laughs> where sims would bathe with clothes on you had ones that were i'm pretty sure there was one that was like technophobe or where they wouldn't use any electronics ever like they were scared of technology ones that were like unable to go swimming or really bathe without freaking out there was things like lucky and brave and loser and all of these traits that just like gave your sim so much more personality and had more of a storyline behind the things that they do and that's something that i really 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 miss and it's just like these traits just don't seem to do much in their day-to-day -day life like yeah if sim could be a dog lover so they might have a dog but like it's not going to do that much. They'll have positive moodlets when they're around dogs, but you can get positive moodlets from just about anything in the game. So it's not impacting my game enough, and I really wish that it did. You also aren't able to choose anything else. You get to choose an aspiration, which I'll get to in a second, and some traits, but then like walk style. I never pick a walk style for my Sims. I always just go default because I'm like, okay, whatever, who cares? And then the sound of their voice, once again, I play usually while watching some kind of podcast or youtube video or movie or music or something so i never hear their voices but in the old games you were able to pick things like their star sign which is something so simple like i used to love being able to make myself in the sims and make myself a cancer because it's like i cry a lot so i feel like i am a cancer and i feel it in my soul you know <laughs> or things like being able to choose their favorite color their favorite music their favorite food like just little things like that that kind of make each sim feel different and you can have like a reason behind the things that they like and why they like them and it just kind of changes the way that you think about the game but it's not something that you can do in this one so the next thing on this list that I actually talked about in my nifty knitting video for the nifty knitting aspiration is that aspirations in The Sims 4 really suck. This is one of the more annoying things for me because in previous games it was more of a lifetime wish, like something your Sims would be working on for their entire life. And in this game you're able to actually switch them up at any time, which makes them not feel as close to The Sims. Like it doesn't, I just feel like it doesn't like hit you in the soul, you know? You want to have something... Like in The Sims 3, you'd be able to have a sim who wants to be a gold digger, and their entire thing is that they want to see the ghost of their dead spouse who was rich. <laughs> so like, that's like something that you'd be working on for quite a while. But in this one, you know, you want your family to have a successful lineage, so you have to do things like become an adult. Like that's really an aspiration milestone, like that's ridiculous. Spend a thousand dollars on kid stuff, also ridiculous. Like become a parent, socialize with your child. Like these are all things that should just be happening in your game and shouldn't be guided by an aspiration. I find that a lot of the aspirations, especially more recent ones, are more of a guide to skills. So if we go to the Lady of the Knits or Lord of the Knits uh, aspiration, all it is is knitting for five hours, start knitting projects while inspired, knit on a rocking chair, achieve level four, knit while listening to music, sell something on Plopsy. Like, I don't know. I just don't feel like this is... A lifetime aspiration. I feel like it's just a way for them to guide you through a pack or to guide you through a skill in a way that they haven't done before and I dislike it thoroughly. <laughs> Especially if you think about ones like the things that came with Island Living, with Island Living or with City Living. So there's literally one that's just beach life. Get a suntan, eat a coconut, find things beach combing, grill barbecue roast food, explore the beach cave, discover buried treasure. Like is, it, is the last part really doze off while relaxing in a lounge chair? Like, that's an aspiration that you're supposed to be working towards for their whole life? I just It just bugs me. Like, master the singing skill, win a contest at GeekCon, live in an apartment worth 100 grand, donate to a protester. Like, these are just so inconsequential, I guess. I don't even know, like, if what I'm saying is making sense, but I just hate aspirations, and I really wish they'd go back to lifetime wishes, because I just found that those drove storylines better than these do. So the next thing on this list is the lack of diversity in skin tones and hair colors. <laughs> I'm seeing so much about this on Twitter and it seems like people aren't just annoyed by it anymore. It's like causing outrage. And I honestly understand why. 
we shouldn't be six years into a game that's about creating yourself and creating a life and like it's a life simulator where you only have this many options for skin tones like it just it's not good and then when you actually go through the skin tones like some of them just don't like especially the darker ones like the undertones are just not well done like they just look weird and like not like real people i know that there's a lot of creators out there that are trying to fight ea on this and like trying to get them to add some kind of color wheel for skin tones and honestly if they could just do that they would appease so many players and there would be so many more simmers making creations and making themselves in the game and seeing themselves in the game, which is going to build a deeper connection to this game and create lifetime players, not with the way that this works. And I know that this is a little bit of an improvement from past Sims games, like The Sims 2 didn't have very many options, but there was a color wheel in The Sims 3. You can't even get hair colors that look like real hair colors in the game. Like, this is literally the ugliest hair color in the entire world, and no real humans would have that on purpose. <laughs> Maybe that's bad, I don't know, but I just find that most of the things in the game just aren't diverse enough. You don't see enough of anything, really. It just kind of seems like it's a like a white millennial simulator and a lot of the hair, especially in the base game, if you're someone who just has the base game, your options for any kind of hair for Sims of Color is just not good. Like, this, this is really one of the only textured hairs that we even have in the game for the base game, and it's just like, really, that's what you get? They have gotten better, like with the new Nifty Knitting Pack, they did add one that was actually good. So it seems like the Sims team is listening and trying to work on it with more different textures and more things that are going to be more diverse and more inclusive. But it just seems like it's taking too long. Like six years of a game is too long to have to wait for something that should have been in the base game. The next thing that pretty much everybody seems to know about is that babies, there's just babies in The Sims 4. Babies are objects, babies are useless, babies just sit there, they don't ever leave their bassinet. They did in Nifty Knitting add the fact that you can change their outfits by knitting them a onesie, but like really you're just changing the way that they look. You're not changing how they actually function. So in like, I really just want Sims 2 babies back. You could feed Sims 2 babies with this like, just, like they would literally get bottle fed and then the bottles would just be everywhere. That was one thing about the Sims 2 that drove me crazy is that there'd be empty bottles all over the floor, but it was hilarious. There was changing tables, which is another thing that I really don't understand why we don't have it in the Sims 4. Babies were, you could just like leave your baby on the floor. <laughs> it was awesome. I loved doing that. But now every single interaction, bottle feed, change diaper, all of them happen right here at the bassinet. And it's ridiculous. We, we got a system in The Sims 2 in 2004 where babies weren't tied to their bassinet and they got an actual crib. I don't understand why we only have bassinets and why like toddlers can't even have cribs. It's just like, none of it makes sense to me. <laughs> I swear if they don't free babies by the end of the year, I'm going to sue. Like, I wish I could. I can't actually sue EA for not freeing the babies, but I want them to. They're just so irritating. So the next thing that I absolutely hate in The Sims 4 is that there's no lore or relationships. So here I am in the goth family. This is the first time the goth family has been played in this save, and the only people they know is each other. I just don't understand that this could be a family that, you know, has built this crazy house in this neighborhood that stands out and like they have no relationships with anyone that lives around them. They don't know anybody that lives in this neighborhood. They don't know anybody that lives in the town. The kids have no friends. Like it's it's not that hard to just throw in a relationship with someone. Like it really it really really isn't. There's cheats for it. The fact that the game has just no relationships built between any of these people and I know that this also happened in Glimmerbrook. So there were like what two families and the families didn't even really know each other. There was like no real relationships between them and it just irritates me. Like it's just little things like that that just bug me so much. But then you look back at something, I know I am keep talking about The Sims 2 because it's my favorite version of this game and I love it so much. But in Pleasant View alone, there was so much drama, so much lore, so many relationships and they ruined them in The Sims 4. So for example, my the one person that makes me the most angry in The Sims 4 is Don Lothario. So let's go visit Don and see how his life is in The Sims 4. So in The Sims 4, <laughs> Don is living in a house with Nina Caliente, Dina Caliente, and their their mother. And I I just I find it very confusing. I'm not. I just I don't understand. Like in The Sims Two. Okay, so first of all, let's start here. The definition of Lothario is a. It, I searched it on Google because I was like, okay, but this. He's supposed to be like a certain way. It says, a man who behaves selfishly and irresponsibly in his relationships towards women. Okay, 
So the fact that in this version of the game, Don Lothario doesn't have relationships with multiple women like he did in The Sims 2. In The Sims 2, he was with Nina, he was with Dina, he had, like, it was like a love triangle with, like, Nina Caliente, Dina Caliente, and Cassandra Goth, of all people, who in this version of the game is a teenager. And it's just so confusing, and the fact that he doesn't have these relationships, like, really just bums me out, because Don Lothario has been in all of, like, been in The Sims for years, and I just wish that they had more lore and more weird relationships mixing between all of the different people, and, like, the one, another one that really bugs me, I know I'm just complaining at this point, but that's what this whole video is, is that if you read the descriptions of the families, Johnny Zest is the child of the land grabs. Like, he is part of their family, but they have no relationship. There is, they don't know each other in the game. They tried to make lore with the family bio, but then they just failed. So if you read the land grabs, it says the land grabs seem like the perfect family. Wealthy, well-mannered, brilliant. But Nancy and Jeffrey are each hiding something. Will their secrets tear them apart or will they continue to build a wealthy dynasty? And then if you go to Sir Johnny Zest, so his description will say, Johnny Zest has the stage name and the dream, but maybe not the talent. Disowned by the land grabs for quitting school, Johnny wants to make his own fame and fortune as a stand-up comedian. Okay, so that's telling you that Malcolm is his brother and... Nancy and Jeffrey are his parents, right? That's what you'd think. But he has no relationships with any other Sims in the entire game. He has no relationships. He has no family tree, which doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about this one because I cannot do it any longer. So the next thing on this list, and this may be a little controversial for some people because I know a lot of people like them, but for me, it's active careers. The entire get-to-work pack for me is not my favorite. So my biggest issue with active careers is that I sometimes just want my sims to go away. I really just want to play their at-home life, make sure they're ready for work, and send them off, or have a sim who entirely works from home. I do not want to go to work with my sims. So the active careers like doctor, detective, and scientist from Get to Work or the acting career from Get Famous are some of my least favorite things to play because I don't want to do all of the work. I don't want to have to go in and get my sim to do all of these things to make them have a good day and then have that be tied to their income. It's just too much for me. I want to send them away and have a couple of hours alone while the kids are at school, the parents are at work, and I'm just chilling. That's my dream. However, I do really like that they are adding the option to work from home to a lot of newer careers. I do like that because sometimes it can be useful if your sims aren't feeling well or whatever, but overall, not a fan. Not a fan of the active. So the next thing that I hate is loading screens. Everybody hates them. Everyone hates loading screens. Now, the reason why we have so many loading screens in The Sims 4 is because we don't have an open world. And for me, not having an open world makes sense because the open world in The Sims 3 made the game almost unplayable for a lot of people. And that's not what you want when you have a giant game that you can make a lot of money off of if you're a company like EA. So they decided to go with a closed world that's very beautiful. <laughs> However, I would really like to see open neighborhoods so that we don't have as many loading screens. Like if I want to go over here and visit this family, you have to go through a loading screen. If you're living in an apartment in San Machuno and you want to go visit your neighbor who's literally right there, like 10 feet away, you have to go through a loading screen. I'm not asking for the entire world to be open in The Sims 5, but I would really like open neighborhoods or at least the option to turn on and off the ability to have an open world or an open neighborhood if that's something that they could figure out, just so that different people who have better computers have the option to have the open world and have that experience, and if you have a lower running computer then you could have the option to not, so that you're, you can play the game and have to suffer through that just because, you know, it's better than nothing. <laughs> So the next thing that I really dislike in The Sims 4 is how small the worlds are. <laughs> you can see here Del Sol Valley, tiny, stupid, ugly, hate it. Like, I think that these regular worlds are small. The only one that I would- oh, that's- Magnolia Promenade is four lots. It's completely useless. The only one that I would give them a pass on is Windenburg because it does have a ton of lots and it's very different and beautiful and Windenburg is the best world in the entire game. But then you have things like Forgotten Hollow and Glimmerbrook. Like, Forgotten Hollow is literally five lots. And I will give them a pass on Glimmerbrook because it has the secret portal. So there's five lots in Glimmerbrook, but you also have the secret portal to the Magic Realm, which probably took a lot of their development money. But I don't give them a pass for Forgotten Hollow. They cannot have that one. Five lots in a world is not enough. Um, but I just, 
something that I really, really miss from past games, like you used to be able to create your own world. You could put lots really close together. You could have a lot of small lots, meaning there'd be like a more hustle and bustle feel because there's so many lots right next to each other and it just feels like a real neighborhood. Sometimes you're just kind of living there and the people are so far away. It's just, I don't know. There's just something about how tiny the worlds are in The Sims that I just don't like. And I also really don't like that they gave us a world that was just empty. And I understand that it's because with the base game, you only got two worlds and they wanted to kind of give you one that you could create yourself. But like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to build this many lots all on my own. I don't mind renovating stuff and changing them up if I want to, but I don't want that to be forced upon me. So like Newcrest for me, most of the time is useless. I don't really use it at all. And it's also not that big. <laughs> But once again, I would love to just have open neighborhoods. Like if you could go to these five lots without a loading screen, that'd be great. These five lots, like it's not that many. It wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> the next thing on this list is a lack of content for younger Sims. So parent in children, toddlers and teens. Now, a lot of people don't really talk about it with teens, but I miss things that were just for teenagers. So in The Sims 4, all the objects that can be used by adults like young adults, adults and elders can be used by teens. So I feel like they kind of get ignored. We don't have things like prom anymore. Like your Sims can't go to prom. They just don't really have as much that they can do in The Sims 4 as a teenager that feels like it's just for teenagers. It's all things that you can do when you're older. So then teenagers don't really feel real and they don't look much different than adults. That's a whole nother thing. They're like the exact same size as adults. It just freaks me out because teenagers are supposed to be smaller and awkward. <laughs> But there's just not that much to do with your teenagers. And then with children, it just feels like they can't use most of the objects in the game that teenagers can use or older adults can use. And it just sucks. It really sucks. And toddlers, like, they have a limited number of items because they were added so late. But even then, I think that if they were in the base game, they wouldn't have many more. So it's just disappointing. And with a lot of the new DLC that comes out, they aren't adding anything new for teens, children, or toddlers. And especially not for babies, which we already talked about. But it's just extremely disappointing when you think that this is supposed to be a life simulator and they skip off on a bunch of life stages. The next thing that I hate in The Sims 4 is something I can't actually show you because it doesn't exist, and it's the fact that we have no police officers and no robbers. Up until recently, we didn't even have firefighters in the game. It's just a huge disappointment to me. One of my favorite things in previous games is when you have all of your Sims asleep, you're peaceful, you're chilling, you're just like watching a movie and you're like, oh, wait, something's happening on screen. And you realize you're being robbed and you forgot to put in an alarm system and you're about to lose some of your stuff and your Sims can't get up fast enough to actually call the police. I know that that sounds like something that a lot of people would not want, but it is something that I want and it's something that I want so bad. I honestly just want the Sims team to add robbers back into the game and not tell anybody, not even have it in the patch notes and just have everyone be surprised when it happens to them. I think that that would be so funny. I really wish that the Sims had more like random negative consequences. So like little things, just the, just little things that could happen. Like I want people to come like rob your house all the time. I don't know why this is something that I want, but it's something that I remember from my childhood and from The Sims 2 that I just need back. <laughs> the next thing that I really dislike is townie outfits. So a lot of the times you will have townies who are dressed a little bit weird. Like why is this guy walking down the street in a pizza delivery uniform? You know, this outfit's not bad, but the bracelet is a little bit questionable with that outfit. They are very random. They don't seem to make much sense. And a lot of the time, okay, you're adorable, but you were made in The Sims Sparked, which we've learned recently, adorable. But any Sim that was created in the game before we got seasons, they are hot and cold weather outfits do not make any sense. They're absolutely ridiculous. I cannot stand that eyeball ring. I don't want to see that anymore. I don't want to see somebody wearing a crop top with low-waisted jeans and a pair of boots that look like they're from vampires. It's... Uh... Just sometimes you go to public places and the outfits are wild and I'm just sick of it. I really wish that they would have like a collection of outfits that don't look too bad together that like the game will choose for townies, but apparently that's not a thing that they do. The next thing on this list is that service sims in The Sims 4 are essentially useless. Have you noticed that the nanny has been sitting watching TV forever while the kid just plays by himself? Half the time, they don't even finish cooking meals that they start, they just leave them half prepared, sitting on the counter. My Sims, I've literally had Sims babies be starving and get taken away because the nanny didn't do anything. And then you bring in a maid and the maid comes in, it cleans the potty and it costs you 90 simoleons. And it's like, you were here for like four hours. All you did was take a thing out of the potty, throw it in the garbage, and then you left. But you were here forever, just walking around, talking to my Sims, 
watching my TV and playing on my computer. Like sometimes some of the glitches that happen with these service sims make me so angry. And don't even get me started on butlers. That is something I will not have in my game until they're actually good and they actually do things because I find them so hard to use. The next thing that really bugs me in The Sims 4 is how long it takes to eat. These Sims will sit there forever eating. And like, I don't want them to eat at like super speed, but it doesn't take over an hour to eat a sandwich. And it drives me crazy because I won't have enough time to ever feed my kids before they go to school in the morning. I don't have enough time to have my family sit down for dinner because they have to focus on eating and then doing their homework. So they're all eating at different times. She's not even gonna finish her meal or she's gonna get up and take it somewhere else. Why can't you just complete your meal at the table where you're supposed to? Are you really just gonna get up to switch seats? Are you kidding me? Why, like, why do these things happen? Why can't they just sit in a chair, eat their meal in like 30 minutes, 45 max, and then be done with it? In addition, they never sit together and actually eat a meal. That's something that doesn't happen very often. And it's just sad. <laughs> I just wish they would eat faster so I had more time to get important things done. So the next thing that really bugs me in The Sims 4 is wood tones. Wood tones just, they don't, they aren't consistent. So like, you can just see slight variations in different wood tones and like, they, they just don't match. They're not the same. Some of them are super orangey. Like these are all supposed to be about the same wood tone and they're very different. They're getting a little bit better with it with more recent stuff. But but one of the ones that I have the most issues with is my favorite bed in the game is this bed. I think that it's absolutely beautiful, but in every swatch, it's almost impossible to find a good matching set of side tables that are the right tone color. So like this is something, it's really hard to tell when you're out and about in the world. Maybe I'll add some walls just so we can get a real vibe of what this would be like in a Sims house, but then add some lights. <laughs> Cause it's too dark now. What am I even doing? So as you can see, this is the lightest version of this table that we got in a update last year, I believe. And then this is the lightest version of that. They don't match at all. Um, let's go more like lightest wood versions. This, this doesn't have anything even close. Like none of it, like, there's no way to match any of them with this bed. And this is my favorite bed in the game, but you can't have a wood toned bed. So I always go with colorful ones, but then sometimes I want it to be a more subdued room and it just doesn't function. And it drives me up the wall because none of this matches that bed. And that is the biggest problem that I have is that some of the stuff is so random. And then we get these like giant bookcases in Nifty Knitting, or they're not bookcases. I think they're just shelving units. Let me find them. Give me a second. So then with Nifty Knitting, we got these, which come in some pretty wild colors. And then you actually get to the ones that are supposed to be like wood toned. And this is like the weirdest dark brown. I don't like it at all. <laughs> like, I just find it to be gross. This one's kind of orangey, which is also weird. Not a fan. Um, and like, it, like they just, I just feel like they're kind of losing it. I feel like they're losing their minds. And I think that's where we're at at this point. I just wish that they would take like six wood tones, even just six, but like, you know, a whitish wood tone, a little bit darker, and then get all the way to a dark wood tone and use those six wood tones throughout every object and a black and white swatch as well. So like eight all together, use those for everything. It's really hard to get cross pack compatibility when you're building because you can't use a lot of the items from one pack with items from another pack because the woods don't match. So unless they're like in a different room or a different part of the house, you can't use them because they look ridiculous. And it just sucks. It's just one of those things that sounds really dumb. It's really, really, really simple. And it honestly really irritates me. And there you have it, you guys. Those are the 15 things that really irritate me and that I hate in The Sims 4. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you agree with any of these or if you disagree with any of these or if you think there's any that I missed, please let me know. I love to hear other people's opinions on the game and see what they think as well. But if you aren't subscribed, be sure to do that. And I really hope you're having an awesome day and I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.